So when uh, the pandemic began and there were mandates and, and health orders and the dispensation was, uh, put, uh, was uh, given and uh, the, the approach we took was, both at St. Helen and Immaculate, the approach we took was to follow the mandates, to follow the directions, to, to follow the health orders. So as we try to go back uh, to some normalcy, we are going to take the same approach because that's the consistent thing to do. However, having said that, I think uh, many people are still being cautious. So I know at both the parishes, one of the things that we are going to do is reserve certain sections for people who would still like to be cautious. Perhaps they're not vaccinated yet. Perhaps they want their children to be vaccinated. So we will give you more details as the time goes by. Um, we certainly will not enforce the mask or the social distancing in certain sections. Uh, and other places, other sections we can. We won't distribute the wine yet, for example, or bring on the holy font, the holy water font right away. So again, as we get back to normalcy, I would like to assure you that we will continue to focus on safety and caution and do everything cautiously. Uh, and that's my word to you. It's the Feast of the Ascension, and uh, I want to think about this feast in two parts. First of all, the reality of the ascension of Jesus. As sure as the death and resurrection of Jesus, Scripture recounts the ascension of Jesus with total confidence and certainty. And today, like the disciples who were left behind in wonderment and awe, perhaps we are also left in amazement. Yet, do we have questions? Sure we do. Nevertheless, the ascension of Jesus remains an essential article of our faith. The second part of today's feast is the Great Commission. In the Markan version of the Commission, which is what we read in the Gospel, Jesus says to his disciples, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature, not just human beings, but creation receives good news of Christ's redemption. Today's scripture readings not only introduce us to this mission, to this mandate, but also suggest the spirit in which the gospel must be proclaimed to the whole world and every creature. Because we can take Mark's commission and perhaps misunderstand that, especially when he says, those who believe and are baptized will be saved, the rest will be condemned. If you look at all of Scripture, there's a spirit in which the good news has to be proclaimed. So we'll talk about that in today's Scripture. So let me draw three implications of the reality of, Je of, of the, the reality of the ascension of Jesus and the task and the accompanying mission he entrusted to his disciples. So here's my first point, and I'm not going to focus on the reality of what happened. Scripture also already tells us what happened. But what can we draw from the actual ascension of Jesus? So the ascension of Jesus brings to conclusion Jesus' incarnated ministry upon the earth. He came from God, and now he goes back to God. He lived a brief life on earth, and much of his life did not go according to plan. But what a life! What a life. He changed the course of human history like no other person ever did. And you and I might say, but he was the son of God, of course. And you are right. But it was not by the divine exercise of power or glory or majesty that he transformed history. Ultimately, not even the greatest miracle he worked swayed the powers that be in his favor. In other words, if it was, if it was by his miracle that he was going to 
to prove that he was a son of God, it didn't work. They killed him. Rather, it was Jesus' fidelity to God, his fidelity to the work entrusted to him, his unexhausting capacity for love, his compassion, his mercy, the forgiveness of even his enemies, and most of all, himself living what he preached. This is what makes him the most admirable person in human history. And the means by which Jesus transformed human history are the very means at our disposal. Jesus' ascension was the culmination of a life dedicated to God and to human redemption. Jesus' ascension then becomes the hope of every person who models his or her life on the life of Jesus. And that's where we come in. We are not sons and daughters of God in the way Jesus was. But in the way that Jesus transformed history, those means are still at our disposal, disposal. And so what we must do is to try to model our lives as closely as possible on the life of Jesus. Yes, the church can and must be transformative in human history. Folks, we may not ascend to heaven one day like Jesus did, but our destiny is the same as that of Jesus. We will be where he is. And what a life it would be if we could go back to God having lived a Christ-like life. Secondly, the mission. How do we ensure that when we get back to God, that we can confidently stand before God? We have examples for that in today's scripture. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, he entrusted his mission to his disciples, saying, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Now, Paul describes this mission when he says to the Ephesians in today's second reading, he says, and he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, and hear this, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith. Folks, Jesus' mission is a great equalizer. What do I mean by that? Jesus personally entrusts every one of this, every one of us with his mission and ministry. No one can say, no baptized person can say, this, this mission is not mine, this ministry is not for me. To use Paul's language, he gave some as fathers and mothers, which you are. Husbands and wives, which you are. Young and old, which we are. Teachers, engineers, doctors, nurses, law enforcement, office clerks, grocery workers, farmers, social workers, and technicians. God has entrusted to us the work of this ministry. Just like he would do to apostles and prophets and teachers. Every one of us is entrusted with the mission of Christ. And what is the mission? To build up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of faith. So today on the Feast of the Ascension, let us make an intentional choice to sharpen our focus and put new energy into the ministry that Jesus has entrusted to us. Today, perhaps you will extend your hands to receive Jesus in communion but not just his presence, but also say yes to the mission, to the ministry given to us. It is ours. And like Jesus, we too can be transformative in our world. Now finally, what does this ministry mission look like? I'm putting most of my emphasis on this third point over here. We used to call it new evangelization and Pope Francis has come and used Yet another term when it comes to the mission of Christ, he's called the followers of Christ 
missionary disciples and it has a certain focus and I want to talk about what it means for today's Christians to be missionary disciples you see Jesus entrusted his mission to his disciples but the New Testament community also had an understanding of how this ministry is to be carried out today's second reading is very helpful Paul finds himself in prison trying to fulfill this ministry so it's very important to notice that he's writing from prison but look at the language that he uses fulfilling Christ's mandate Paul from prison writes and this is to each one of us I urge you brothers and sisters to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received and now hear this with all humility and gentleness with patience bearing with one another through love striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace if every church across the world was just this can you imagine the power the church could have humility gentleness patience bearing with one another through love striving to preserve unity and peace this is how the ministry of Christ must be engaged and I do not want to engage in a historical critique of the ancient Holy Roman Empire or the medieval colonial Christianity which having the right intentions carried out Christ's mission in a missionary style alien to the gospel or the spirit of the New Testament I come from one of those colonialized countries and the impact of colonial Christianity was brutal for India Pope Francis's concept of missionary discipleship is more aligned with Paul's exhortation in the Ephesians on July the 15th 2018 Pope Francis laid out what it means to be missionary disciples and this is for you and I okay this is not just for cardinals and bishops and priests and no this is for every one of us first he says the missionary disciple has a center a point of reference and what do you think it is the person of Jesus Christ at the center of every missionary disciple the only center is the person of Jesus Christ Pope Francis's real concern is how quickly and easily missionary efforts can become centered around ideologies cultures individual personalities or even larger groups you hear about some sometimes great missionary missionary efforts end up becoming cults right Pope Francis says ministry can very quickly become alienated from the person of Jesus Christ so Pope Francis wants us to keep centered on the person of Jesus Christ second Pope Francis says that missionary discipleship is characterized by a face and a heart of which poverty is a means and by that he's not meaning that we are all miserable people economically or financially that's not what he's saying but what he means is exactly what is meant by Paul's exhortation that we live in humility and gentleness with patience bearing with one another through love striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace in other words missionary discipleship means that we are rich in Christ and poor in self-promotion that we are rich in Christ but poor in self-promotion arrogance and triumphalism Christ cannot be attached to cultural expansion ideological wars nationalistic propaganda racial supremacy or a sense of even religious superiority this is the danger that we take Christ's words those who are baptized and saved and everybody else is going to hell this is not the language that a missionary disciple speaks 
To be a missionary is to be poor in the self and rich in Christ and Christ alone. So I think today's feast has tremendous implications for the church. You see, Christ is gone, but he leaves his presence behind. What is the presence? It's you and I. We are the presence of the risen Christ. And we have the body of Christ which transforms us into the body of Christ. So Christ is gone, but Christ is present in the world. And today's feast teaches us how we can be present and the spirit in which we can be present. As the disciples gathered at the Mount of the Ascension, today in this Eucharist and at this altar, we are gathered around Christ. I pray that wonder and amazement and, and ministry and the enduring presence of, of Christ may seize us. And I pray that filled with the richness of Christ, we will go out to the world as missionary disciples in humility, in gentleness, and in love. People of God said,